Uh, we're going to create the visor now by appending a polygon to this open spot where the visor should be. We're going to go to Mesh Tools, Append to Polygon Option Box, and reset the tool as always. And then you're going to turn off Keep New Faces Planar and keep this open because uh, this turns itself back on for me at least. It, I don't know if it will for you or not, but let's watch this. I'm going to click it once to select the mesh and then click this edge to start the tool. And here's where it turns back on. So I'm going to turn that off again. And then I'm just going to click the edge opposite that first click and go around. And it's easy with this tool to misclick and end up with a stray point that flies off into oblivion. If you do that, middle click that point and just press the delete key and continue and just try again. So I'm going to click that edge, that edge, and just right on around the, the mesh and then press Q when you're done. And then for mine, it turned off default material when I did that. I don't know why. And so that's a little opportunity to talk about this. This is wireframe. Same thing as the shortcut key four. This is smooth shaded. This is default material. This is wireframe on shaded. And this is textured. And this is used lighting. So this creates an N-GON as well as a non-planar polygon, and we want to fix that. So we're going to use the Mesh Tools Multi-Cut tool to slice those polygons correctly. And we just create a cut from these three vertices down to their corresponding vertices at the bottom. So uh, with the Multi-Cut tool active, just single click, and then press Enter. Sorry, I'm trying to press control to circle the polygon. Enter. I'm sorry, vertex is what I meant. And we want to slice a cut around the visor. And if you press control on the multi cut tool, it turns into the edge loop tool and you can slice a cut around the visor as such. I think that was a little higher than I wanted. I'm going to undo that and just move it down a tad. I'm not quite sure why it's indenting like that, but it doesn't really matter. And I've got this funky little issue with my geometry here. Um, there's, there's a there's a bit of geometry missing where the snout should be, and that's going to be, um, that's not going to create the correct nose. So I'm going to do another edge cut um, with the multi cut tool that's going to go around. Actually, let me, do, let me do a tweak first in the side view. Let's go to the move tool, go to vertex. And then I'm going to move this vertex to where it's right at the bridge of the nose here. And let's check on this one. I think this one needs to move too. And I'm going to line this one up with that right there. That works. OK, so now we need this little. Um, we need a little line of points here so we can create this snout. So um, you can go to uh, Mesh Tools, Edge Loop, Insert Edge Loop, or you can go to Multi Cut Tool. Either one works. If you're using the Multi Cut, hold down Control, and we're going to put another Edge Loop right about here. Uh, we're going to end up with a little extra geometry around the like these edges are extra, they won't appear in the tutorial, but it doesn't really hurt anything. If you opened Helmet 3 to continue on with this point, you won't have this, but if you followed along exactly with what I've been doing, uh, you might have this. I'm not quite sure what happened, but 
but easy fix. So we're going to take the helmet vertices now and um, we're going to smooth that out a little bit. First thing I'm going to do is in the side view here just pull this out so that it's got a bit of a curvature to it. Obviously that's not much of a curve yet. It's going to be later when we smooth it. Uh, double click the move tool to get into the settings. Reset the tool and let's go to access orientation normal. And we're going to do kind of the same thing we did with the top of the helmet and that is to pull out any dents and push in any, any bumps or spikes. So mostly what I've got is dense, it looks like. Yeah, that's still a little far out. So that we've got kind of a dome. Kind of a rounded shape. You don't want it to be wonky. So, um, we're going to create diagonal grill vents on the lower front of the helmet. And to do that, we're going to insert edges on this face right here. Uh, let's go to Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop, Option Box. And we're going to set the following. We're going to reset the tool first. We're going to go to multiple edge loops. The number of edge loops is going to be four. And that will create basically four edges. Okay, that should not have done the whole thing though. I'm going to undo that because that's not what I wanted. Um, so go to face component mode. I want to select the face, insert edge loops. <laughs> That's what I missed. Turn off autocomplete. Then you can click on this edge and click on the next edge over. So, um, yeah, the autocomplete is what makes it go all the way around. So you can reset that tool and close that. And let's grab these edge loops, uh, let's grab the vertices right along the right side of the edge loop and um, my move tool options are still set so I can um, just grab the V axis and push this down and that will create kind of a grill that I'm going to be able to um, extrude inward let's go to um, Back to object mode, go to face mode, and we're going to extrude these two faces right here. I'm just going to press control E for the extrude, and I'm going to give it a thickness of negative one, or you can just push it in along the z-axis if you want. And that's going to leave us with two extra polygons right here. Um, just the way the extrude works. So select that polygon and delete it and select that polygon and delete it. Whoa, I ended up with a couple. Oh, and there's this polygon on the inside of the mask that I, I don't need anymore. That's what happened that I can get rid of. I don't think I ever got rid of that. Well, clearly I didn't. 
Um, if you have that polygon still there, you can get rid of that polygon. We don't need it. Now we have to deal with this polygon right here, which is now an end gon. So we have to terminate the edge loops with the cutting tool. The multi-cut tool works just fine for this. Um, we're going to create a couple of cuts um, so that we end up with some tries and quads here instead of an end gon. So cut from this vertex right here to this vertex right here and then make one more cut from this vertex right here to the same corner and press enter. And that leaves us with a try right here, which is fine. And this is now a quad. And is that right? It seems like this should be cut too. I think it'll be okay. Either way, I th yeah, it seems like this should be cut because this has one, two, three, four, five vertices. So I think that's supposed to be cut. Let's see if it breaks anything. Let's cut this one too. Right here. Cut that vertex into this vertex. I didn't notice that. I'm not sure if the... So a lot of times the smooth will take care of that anyway. So Now we're going to mirror this. Um, before we do, go to the top view. And it looks like everything lined up pretty well for me that might not have happened for you. Um, if any of these, let's just move something so that you've got something to work with. Uh, oh, that's not right. Reset the move tool first. So you might end up with some stray vertices that moved off the origin. That's going to be a problem when you mirror the geometry. So you're going to want to grab those vertices um, and basically you can you can just do this all in one big swoop you can draw out a selection that grabs all that stuff and under move snap settings you want to turn off retain component spacing so that they all snap to the grid individually and then press X to snap to grid and move it back to the origin like so. And I'm going to reset the tool again. And now I'm going to mirror this under mesh, mirror geometry, or just mirror rather, and go to the option box. And let's reset settings. The mirror should be in the x-axis negative direction combined with original should be on and we're going to merge border vertices oh and we need to be in object mode so there we go Now, I'm going to have a whole bunch of um, history on this object now. In the channel box, you can see all these inputs, which is basically every move that we made on this object to create it one by one. So leading all the way up to the poly mirror, and you can go through each one of these and change any setting that um, that it might have uh, inherited from from that action any one of these so and this is all the way down to the polycube one this is our very first thing that we did when we started it's all there now I don't want you to do this but I'll show you like these these will change things as you can see. In fact, I might have just crashed it. <laughs> um, as a rule, you want to create um, your models and then when
when they're done modeling, you want to um, you want to delete the history. And the reason for that is to clean up the clutter, first of all, and to create um, uh, create a clean model that doesn't have all that dead weight in it. Um, once the geometry is done, this is the major milestone of creating a uh, any model is deleting the history. So the, the model is fully ready to go. You don't need the history anymore. Click Edit, Delete All by Type History. So and that deletes all the history in your scene, by the way. Um, if you want just the model you have selected, just Delete by Type instead of Delete All by Type. Okay, and you'll see all those inputs went away. If I go to the attribute editor, it doesn't have a gazillion tabs anymore. So that's very important for performance. Um, even when you're not talking about video games, um, in a sense, it bakes the geometry. So every every change is now baked. It's there forever. I mean, not really. You can go through and tweak the individual vertices still, but there's no um, there's no connection to tools like extrude and, and cut and stuff like that. So um, the next thing we want to do is smooth it and we're going to keep a connection to the loc polygon mesh <coughs> for um, the smooth high resolution mess. And you can do that by selecting the object and leave it in um, object mode. And let's go to mesh display. Is it mesh display? No, it's just mesh. Smooth proxy, subdiv proxy, option box. And let's reset the settings. Okay, so we want to set division levels to 2. And we want to set mirror behavior to none. Subdiv proxy shader we want to set to keep. And click smooth. And it will create a smooth proxy group. The group is the low res model and the high res model. We might want to name these two. I think I'm going to name it. Helmet, low res, helmet, high res. This has a connection to the original still, so any tweak that I make will appear on that high resolution model. So, as you can see, so I am going to create some creases that will sharpen up a few of these edges. I want to select the edge around around the visor here. You can start with a double click and it will get some of that edge but not all of it. And so I'm going to shift double click here and I'll get these two. Shift double click here and I'll get all the way around the top brow. And then if I shift double click here I'll get these two. And I'm going to go to mesh display and I'm going to harden edge. And then I think it's is it mesh tools? Mesh tools, crease tool. And you're going to middle click on this edge and can you see on the right there where it's updating as you middle click and drag it creases it creases the corresponding edge so now I'm going to do the same thing with this edge so 
just keep clicking until you've got the whole thing selected. Sure, why not? I'm going to go with it. And I'm going to do the same thing with this edge up here. And I'm going to go around this way. And, you know, just for fun, why not? Let's just... This is a little more than the tutorial calls for, but whatever. So you see that selection? I've got these two edges. Let's go to Mesh Display, Harden, Mesh Tools, Crease Tool, and I will middle click and harden those edges. So I missed this little bit here in my selection. So there we go. And then just around the grill now. I'm going to select this edge. Get the inside of the grill here and then I'm going to select the upper edge as well. And same with the bottom. makes much visual difference if you harden these first or not, but um, I just like to do it because that's what the instructions say to do, so I just roll with it. Okay, and let's do a save as. Hey, there it is. And save it as Helmet 4. I will replace that. And let's do a file, new scene. And we're going to talk about some polygon troubleshooting. Now there's going to come a time in your modeling career, sooner or later, that you're going to have some bad geometry to fix. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of the common bugs that um, you as a beginner will be likely to have to sort out, along with a little more on polygons themselves. Um, let's create two polygon objects, a tri and a quad, and we're going to use the mesh tool, create polygon tool. So one, two, three, that's a tri, and one, two, three, four, that's a quad. Now, this is going to um, give us some stuff that we can play with and show how to break a polygon and how to fix it. Um, first of all, in the Hypergraph Hierarchy window, you will notice, let's go to Hypergraph, General Editors, Hypergraph Hierarchy, You will notice that these two surfaces are separate nodes. So let's combine them into one using Mesh Combine. And now the two surfaces become one node. They still have the history, but it's considered one object. And when you select the poly surface 3, the two objects are, are selected, the two shells. Now the original still exists until you delete the history. If you want to delete these, you do an edit, delete all by type, history. And now we've just got poly surface 3. Now these are um, 
two polygons, one object. If I go to vertex mode, I can manipulate the vertices as always. Now, one of the problems that you can end up with um, is a non-planar uh, polygon. A try cannot be non-planar. It doesn't matter where the three vertices are. It's impossible for it to not be a plane with three vertices. So if you understand your geometry, you understand that. If you don't entirely understand that, just don't worry about it. it all you need to know is tries cannot possibly be non-planar. Quads can. So if you select one of the vertexes and move it up or down, it becomes non-planar. And that can cause issues with lights, it can cause issues with surfaces, all kinds of good stuff. <clears throat> Now let's open stairs and take another look at stairs. Full one polygon basics stairs. Select the stair geometry and then click display uh, polygons. Custom polygon display. Whoops. And I think we wanted an option box on that. Polygons, custom polygon display, option box. And we're going to set highlight to um, border edges. If I can find it, there it is. and also check face normals. And click OK, or well, click Apply and Close so we can see the face normals and the border edges. So this is a good way to assess what's going on with these, this geometry. Um, as you can see, as we talked about earlier, half of the polygons have flipped normals. They should be facing outward. So these, this half is facing inward. I want to cl right click and go to face mode. And to fix this, we can do this in side view probably. We're just going to marquee drag a selection around all those polygons and select Mesh Display Reverse. And that flips the normals so that they are correctly seated. Now these two halves are actually not correctly glued together. If I select half of the object and move it, it will actually break away, which is not, not what we want. So I'm going to select the vert vertices in the middle, and I'm going to glue them together. When polygons are modeled, sometimes you can leave vertices behind that are no longer necessary. These floating vertices can pose problems down the road, so it's a good idea to keep an eye out for them and clean them up. It can be hard to locate these vertices visually, but Maya's selection tool um, makes the task easy by allowing you to select polygon objects and, and components based on different criteria. So if I select the stairs and switch to vertex component mode, and I'm going to go to selection constraint, click select, uh, selection constraint,
it must be use constraints. Now to apply whatever constraints you set to the next selection, so the next thing I select, I'm going to select next selection. Let's reset this first. Okay, so next selection. You can also apply it to the current selection or both current and the next selection. To select all components on the selected object that meet these constraints and your next collection, selection, collect, choose all and next. I'm sorry. So properties I want inside and under geometry, neighbors. I want to activate that with a maximum neighbors of two. By setting the selection constraint to select vertices with a maximum of two neighboring vertices, only the floating vertices, which always have two neighbors, will be selected. Now click close and remember. And I believe we can drag a selection all the way across the whole thing. And that will give us just the floating vertices that we don't want. So let's delete those. And now let's reset the display. Let's go to display polygons and let's reset that and let's do the merge now I might still have so I've still got those selection constraints on so I want to go back to select use constraints and let's just reset disable all close and reset. There we go. And now to get this, like I said before, if you um, if you move half of this away it breaks apart, which is not what we want. So to get that glued together, I'm just going to select the vertices down the middle here. And I'm going to click Edit Mesh Merge. And let's try going back to face mode and let's see that should have worked yep it worked okay so now it is glued together so to speak and um, so I talked about non-planar polygons um, the only other thing to keep in mind is maybe bow tie polygons um, mesh tools. create polygon that's what I'm looking for see it's not helpful to have four menus called mesh uh, another thing that can happen even um, without uh, without making your polygon non-planar is you can cross it over itself and create bow tie geometry and you can end up with some some surface glitches as you can see you want to watch out for that you don't want it to fold over itself and you can also end up with uh, bow tie geometry so me create a bow tie here or not a bow tie I'm sorry uh, t-shape geometry so if I do this I've got a t-shape and 
you don't want that either. That's um, something that can, uh, when three faces share a common edge, you've got a T-shape. And that is called non-manifold geometry. So any of this stuff can cause glitches with your surfacing, with your lighting. Um, you want to watch out for it and get rid of it. So good luck and happy hunting. And there's lots of tools out there that help you get rid of this stuff. So um, don't be afraid to Google it if you find you've got glitches in your geometry.